From around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the seventh year of theCUBE's coverage of the MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium. We love getting to talk to these chief data officers and the people in this ecosystem, the importance of data, driving data-driven cultures, and really happy to welcome to the program, first time guest, Eileen Vadreen. Eileen is the chief data officer for the United States Air Force. Eileen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Stu, really excited about being here today. All right, so the, the, the United States Air Force, uh, I believe had its first CDO office in 2017. Uh, you were put in this, the CDO role in, in June of 2018. If you could bring us back, you know, give us you know, how, how that was formed uh, inside the, the Air Force and, and how you came to be in, in that role. Well, Stu, I like to say that we are a startup organization and a really mature um, organization. So it's really about culture change and it began by bringing a group of amazing citizen airmen reservists uh, um, back to the Air Force to bring their skills from industry and bring them in, in into the Air Force. So I like to say that we're a total force because we have um, active and reservists working in our with civilians on a daily basis. And one of the first things we did in June was we stood up a data lab um, that's based in Jones, the Jones Building on Andrews Air Force Base. And there we actually take small use cases that have enterprise focus, and we really try to um, dig deep to try to you drive data insights to inform um, senior leaders across the department on really important what I would call enterprise focused um, challenges, which is, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, it, it, it's been fascinating when we've dug into this ecosystem. Uh, of, of course, while the data itself is very sensitive, and I'm sure for the Air Force, there, there are some very, uh, you know, very highest level of security, the practices that are done as to how to leverage data, the, the line between public and, and, and private uh, blurs because you have people that have come from industry that go into uh, government and people that have from government that, that have leveraged their experiences there. Um, so if, if you could give us you know, a little bit of your background um, and you know, what it is that you know, your, your charter has been and what, what you're looking to build out, um, as you mentioned, that, that culture of change. Well, um, I like to say I began my data leadership journey in as an an active duty soldier in the army, and I was uh, originally a transportation officer. Today, we would use the title uh, condition based maintenance, but um, back then it was really about um, you know doing running the numbers so that I could optimize my uh, truck fleet on the road each and every day so that my soldiers were driving safely and um, that has just data has always been part of my leadership journey and so I, I like to say that one of our challenges is really to make sure that data is part of every airman's core DNA so that they're using the right data at the right level to drive insights um, whether it's tactical, operational, or strategic. And so it's really, it's about a, uh, really about empowering each and every airman, which I think is pretty um, exciting. Yeah, there, there's so many pieces of that data. You talk about data quality, there's obviously the data life cycle. Um, I, I know your presentation that you're given here at the CDOIQ uh, talks about uh, the data platform um, that, 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 that your team has built. Uh, could you explain that? What, what are the key tenants and, and, and what maybe differentiates it from what, uh, what other organizations might have done? So um, when we first uh, took the challenge to build, a, to build our data lab, we really wanted to really come up, our goal was to have a cross-domain solution where we could solve data problems at the appropriate uh, classification level. And so we built the Vault data platform. Vault stands for visible, accessible, understandable, linked, and trustworthy. And if you look at the DOD data strategy, they will also add the tenants of interoperability and secure. So the first steps that for, we have really focused on is making 
data visible and accessible to airmen to empower them to drive insights from available data to solve their problems. So it's really about that data empowerment. We like to use the hashtag built by airmen because it's really about each and every airman um, being part of the solution. And I think it's it's really an exciting time to be in the Air Force because any airman can solve a really um, hard challenge and it can very quickly wrap it up, rapidly escalate up uh, with great velocity to senior leadership to be an enterprise solution. Yeah, so is, is there some you know, basic training that goes on from, from a data standpoint for any of those that have lived in data uh, you know, oftentimes you can get lost in numbers. You have to have context. You need to understand, you know, how do I separate, you know, you know, good from bad data, or when is the data still valid? So, how, how does someone in the Air Force get some of that beta data competency? Well, we we have taken a multi-tenant approach because each and every airman has different needs. So we have quite a few pathfinders across the Air Force today to help what I call upskill our total force. And so we, I, I developed a partnership with um, the Air Force Institute of Technology, and they um, now have a uh, online a graduate level data science certificate program. So individuals studying at AFID or remotely have the opportunity to um, really focus on building up their data touch points. Just recently, we, um, we have been working on a pathfinder to allow our data officers to get their ICCP data, federal data sector uh, governance certificate program. So we've been running what I would call short boot camps to prep data officers to be ready for that. And I think the one that I'm most excited about is that this year, this fall, new cadets at the U.S. Air Force Academy will be able to have an undergraduate degree in data science. And so it's it's not about a one-prong approach. It's about having short courses as well as academe solutions to upskill our total force moving forward. Well, well, information absolutely is such an important differentiator in general in business and absolutely uh, the, the military aspects are there. Um, you mentioned uh, the, the, the DOD talks about interoperability in their platform. Can you speak a little bit to you know, how you make sure that you know, data is secure yet I'm sure there's opportunities for other organizations for there to be collaboration between them. Well, we um, I like to say that we don't fight alone. So I work on a daily basis with my peers, Tom Sasela at the Department of Navy and Greg Garcia at the Department of, of Army, as well as uh, Dave, Mr. David Spurk at the, at, the, at the DOD level. It's really important that we have an integrated approach moving forward. And in the DOD, we partner with our um, security experts. So it's not about us doing security individually it's really about in the air force we use a term called digital air force and it's about optimizing and building a trusted partnership with our cio colleagues as well as our chief management colleagues because it's really about that trusted partnership between to make sure that we're working collaboratively across the enterprise and whatever we do in the department we also have to reach across our services so that we're all working together yeah, Eileen, I, I I'm curious if there's been much impact from, from the global pandemic. When I talk to enterprise companies, uh, that they had to rapidly make sure that uh, while well, they needed to protect data when it was in their four walls and maybe through VPN, now everyone is accessing data, uh, much more work from home and the like. I, I have to imagine some of those security measures you've already taken, but have, have there anything along those lines or anything else uh, that, that the, the shift in where people are and uh, a little bit more dispersed ha has impacted your work. Well, the the story that I like to say is um, that this has given us velocity. So, in um, prior to COVID, we built our Vault Data platform as a as a multi-tenancy 
platform that is also cross-domain solution. So it allows people to develop and do their problem solving in an appropriate classification level, and it allows us to um, connect or push up if we need to into higher classification levels. The other thing that it has helped us really work smart because we do as much as we can in that unclassified environment and then um, using our cloud-based solution in our, our gateways, it allows us to bring people in at a very scheduled component so that we maximize the, or we optimize their time on site. And um, so I really think that it's really given us great velocity because it has really allowed people to work at, um, on the, the right problem set on the right classification level at a specific time. And so I really think that, um, and plus the other piece as we look at what we're doing is that it, the problem set that we've had has really allowed people to become more data focused. I think that, P, that it's personal for folks moving forward. So it has increased understanding in terms of the need for data insights as we move forward to drive decision making. It's not that data makes the decision, but it's using the insight to make the decision. Well, and one of the interesting conversations we've been having about how to get to those data insights is the use of things like machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, anything you can share about you know, how you're looking at that journey, wh wh where you are along that kind of discovery? Well, um, I love to say that in order to do AI and machine learning, you have to have great volumes of um, high quality data. And so really step one was visible accessible data. Um, but we um, in the Department of the Air Force stood up an accelerator um, at uh, MIT. And so we have a group of amazing airmen that are, are actually working with MIT on a daily basis to solve some of those, um, what I would call opportunities for us to move forward. My office uh, collaborates with them um, on a consistent basis because they're doing additional use cases in that academic environment, which uh, I'm pretty excited about because I think it gives us access to some of the smartest minds. All right, uh, Eileen, also I understand it's, it's your first year uh, doing the event. Uh, unfortunately, we don't get to all come together in, in Cambridge, uh, walking those hallways and being able to listen uh, to, to some of those conversations and follow up is something you know, we've very much enjoyed over the years. Uh, what, what excites you about being interact, interact with your peers and, and participating uh, in the event this year? Well, I really think it's about helping each other leverage um, the amazing lessons learned. I think that if we look collaboratively both across industry and in the federal sector, there have been amazing lessons learned and it gives us a great forum for us to really share and leverage those lessons learned as we move forward so that we're not hitting the reboot button, but we actually are starting faster. So it comes back to the velocity component, it all helps us go faster and um, at, at a higher quality level. And I think that's really exciting. So fi final question I have for you, we, we, we've talked for years about digital transformation. We've really said that having that, that, that data strategy uh, and, and that culture of leveraging data is one of the most critical pieces of, of having gone through that transformation. For people that are maybe early on their journey, any advice that you'd give them having uh, you know, worked through a couple of years of this and the experience you've had with your peers? I think that the first thing is that you have to really start with um, a blank slate and really look at the art of the possible. Don't think about what you've always done, think about where you want to go so that, because there are many different paths to get there and if you look at what the target goal is, it's really about making sure that you you do that backward tracking to get to that goal. And the other piece, the other piece that I tell my colleagues is celebrate the wins. Um, my team of airmen, they are amazing. It's an honor to serve them. And um, the reality is that they are doing great things. Um, and sometimes you want more. And it's really important to celebrate the victories um, because it's a very long journey. And the, we keep moving the goalposts because we're always striving for excellence. 
A absolutely. It is always a journey that we're on. It, it, it's not about the destination. Eileen, thank you so much for sharing uh, all that you've learned and uh, glad you could participate. Thank you, Stu. I appreciate being included today. Have a great day. Thanks. And thank you for watching theCUBE. I'm Stu Miniman. Stay tuned for more from the MIT CDO IQ event.